Hello and welcome to the 49th episode of Fresh Off the Reel. My name is Lib. My name is Pat Lord. I should have thought about that one more. <laughs> <laughs> and t- today, we're t- today we're talking about uh, the newest MCU movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This seems like a little trend we're doing here where I guess we're just going to do MCU movies, but only the ones we care about because we-, we didn't do an episode on, uh, on-, on-, on Ant-Man. Yeah, we, we we did a. I mean, we we did more than I thought we were going to for Ant Man. Yeah, we did fifteen minutes of Ant Man. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll probably you'll probably get fifteen minutes of of the next MCU movie because uh, can't say I'm too interested. But and that's for next time. Yeah. <laughs> this time we're talking about uh, this movie. This movie directed by James Gunn, twenty twenty three. But before we talk anything, it's been a while. We know. Uh, well, I mean, when you're, you're hearing this one week after the Mario episode, but the Mario episode and the last, and the Creed 3 episode have a pretty substantial gap. Uh, we recorded the Mario episode before Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out, and, uh, you're hearing this about a, a month, month later? after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we said we were gonna take a week, but then, uh, well, we, we, we weren't, like, too busy to record, it's just... Uh, shit happens, life got in the way, you know, a little bit. We got a little busy. Zelda may or may not have played a factor, but we did get a little busy. Look, we're not, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat, okay? I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't want to record because I was too busy playing Zelda. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I didn't want to record because the only thing I'm talking about right now is Spider-Man. And unfortunately, we're not talking about Spider-Man, so. <laughs> there's your reference for today. There's, there's, uh, there's the reference. Yeah, I mean, like... Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, if you guys ha- aren't playing it, but fucking get the fuck on that. Do that, please. It's really good. It's really good, and I enjoyed it. I, I finished it, so that's why I'm able to- I- I'm okay leaving my Switch. Yeah, I haven't-, <laughs> I haven't finished it yet. I'm really close to finishing it, though, but we're gonna stop talking about it now, because this is not a video game podcast. This is the Zelda movie, right? The inevitable Zelda movie that's gonna come out? This is what we're recording Man. today. We talked a little bit about if there would ever be a Zelda movie in our Mario movie review. And there like, will be. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say there might be. Uh, I, I, as of the time of recording, uh, Mario made a lot of money. A lot more money than it did when we talked about Mario. Yeah, but I'm pre- <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're just gonna make Mario movies, and by that I mean like Yoshi, Luigi, like Luigi's Mansion, like uh, Yoshi's Island, uh, like Mario Galaxy. Stuff like that. I'm pretty sure they're gonna stick to Mario. Nah, I don't know. I I, I think Miyamoto said they want to do other Nintendo movies, and I definitely see it happening. I would. I see. I see Zelda as a TV show. I I, I would prefer a TV show. See, I I see Zelda as a TV show where Link just does r- something random every episode, and it's not really that connected. Cause like. The stories in Zelda games are usually very, like, bare bones. It's usually, like, uh, leave the forest, go to lava, do that, then go to water, do that, and then go to castle, game over. I, I would prefer a show, I agree with you on that regard. But if it'll be this, can a TV show have a scene where Link um, drives a go-kart to take on me? No, but but there's no cars in... In, in that's not true anymore that's not true anymore you're, you're right that's not true anymore they're right but they're not gonna they're not gonna do a tears of the kingdom movie but you know what else is it in zelda marvel the guardians of the galaxy <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk cinema <laughs> so guardians of the galaxy volume three uh let's let's uh let's see this uh this this plot synopsis let's let's read it out here this is the uh this is the last guardians movie uh, supposedly it's it's the last one james gunn is involved in um yeah it's the true. end the end of this trilogy uh dare i say the most consistent trilogy in the mcu yeah yeah probably i don't know the only other trilogy is iron man oh uh, and spider-man captain, and captain america and thor all thor's a f- Quadrilogy now? There's, there's, there's a trilogy in there. Quadrilogy. Let's but, just pretend that fourth one didn't happen. Oh, but then we have to acknowledge that the second one happened. Yeah, but we can't. I don't want to acknowledge both. So <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's a um, duology. <laughs> a random, random note to date the episode, but Chris Hemsworth uh, in an interview today said his kids hated it and his kids' friends made fun of him for Love and Thunder. <laughs> and, then, and then he admitted that it was maybe a little bit too goofy. 
Yeah, well. Uh, so for all the people who said that uh, it's a kids' movie, shut up, don't hate it. Even the stars' kids didn't like it, and they they exist because of those movies. So they have a stake in the game. But uh, yeah, Guardians. Plus synopsis from Letterbox. Here we go. Uh, Peter Quill, still reeling from the loss of Gamora, must rally. You know what? Fu- I don't want to read this. You know, this, this- <laughs> yeah, just 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 to read it. Read it. <laughs> Uh, it must rally his team around him to defend the universe along with protecting one of their own. A mission that, if not completed successfully, could possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. Wow, the stakes are high. That's what the movie's about. The stakes are really high. Oh boy, I can't wait to see who dies in this movie. Spoiler alert, nobody. Nobody dies. I, I really thought, uh, I really thought Rocket was, uh, was gone by the end of this. And Drax. Drax, I didn't think had like I, I didn't think he was gonna die just because I feel like uh, if he was ever gonna die, it would have been in Infinity War. But um, hey, well, he didn't. He didn't die here either. Look, I, I, so, I, I thought I thought it would be Drax and Rocket because uh, Dave Bautista said he hates playing Drax. He doesn't want to do it anymore. And you know, Rocket was really the focus of this movie. Yeah, for for someone who's like not in it much. Um, he's, he's kind of the lead. Um, he, he's, he's kind of MIA for, for that, like, like, I'm gonna say half the movie, because there are, there are flashbacks, obviously, with him, um, but he's, he, he's the lead, kind of, he's the, the focus of the story, and the Guardians have to come together, including our, our little Gamora out of time, which is a plot point I'll talk about later, um, have to team up and, and, and save him. Well, we learned about his past that they've been hinting at for like two movies. And, uh, just, to, just to put it out there, if you haven't seen this movie and you're a little squeamish about um, violence towards animals, maybe don't watch this movie. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a, It can be a bit of a hard watch if you're not prepared. But I think the trailers did plenty, plenty well enough to prepare you for what was going to happen here. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say like this, this movie would have surprised me a lot more on the, on the like the, 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 the animal cruelty stuff. I would have been even more surprised that it was in the movie if it wasn't in the game. We're gonna be talking about the game a little bit here, Pat. I, I don't, I know you haven't finished it. I haven't finished it, but I, I do know some stuff about the game. Yeah. Um. The, the Guardians of the Galaxy game is first of all really, really good, but this movie kind of adapts it and and it's 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 not afraid to say that it adapts the game and you're you're gonna see like when you play like when you finish the game like when you just play through the whole thing uh the movie's pretty much just an adaptation of the game and i, I haven't seen anybody making that connection is is like adam warlock and stuff in the game i didn't, I didn't know that yes or is it just the or is it just like the rocket stuff that's the rocket stuff is from the game the stuff that happens on nowhere is from the game Okay. The 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 part where they go to like a planet that's made of like biomass or whatever that's like a living thing that's just ripped straight from the game. I I think the reason people uh, aren't comparing it to the game is because the game probably adapted it from a comic book. Probably <laughs> at this yeah. point we expect that, so <laughs> that's probably why. Um, but yeah, I I do plan on playing the game. Um, I do really like the the Guardians of the Galaxy. I know I know I, I don't talk about them like the, the the characters. I don't really talk about them as much as I talk about other Marvel characters, just because they're they're not high on my list of like my favorite characters. But in terms of like the MCU specifically, um, I do really like the Guardians. I think they're they're probably the best team in the MCU. Yeah, for sure. I I agree with that. I I like them a lot. Especially, and I think this movie is a nice kind of conclusion to, to all of them as a group, because uh, we'll get there when we get there, but spoilers. The Guardians don't die in this movie, but they do disband, and um, I- I'm sure we'll, we'll, we're definitely going to see Peter Quill at some point in the future, because that's how the movie ends, but also, I'm sure we'll see, like, Rocket and stuff, at least in cameos during, like, Kang, the Kang Dynasty and shit. But um, as far as Guardians of the Galaxy movies, this team is done, and I'm, I'm sad to see them go, because I do like them a lot. I do like these movies, uh, Quite a fair bit, especially the first one. I think they're really fun. And this movie, despite being a, a sad movie in nature and tone, and it's definitely a bit of a hard watch, a little if you're squeamish at times. Um, it, it is it is still a Guardians movie, and the Guardians are are fun, and I like them. Yeah, I saw I saw a lot of people saying that this movie has the same amount of emotion as No Way Home and Endgame. I don't agree with that 
like the, the end game has really like the finale vibe to it and no way home's not that emotional at all in my opinion i think i think no way home is emotional if you're really attached to to peter and his relationship with like ned and, and mj yeah but i i but that but it's more um it's emotional in a self-contained way, kind of like how this movie is emotional in like in, in it's self-contained to the Guardians and their story. Then it is emotional, but I think Endgame is is emotional as a, a finale for the MCU. So I, I think like Tony's death and everything is a bit hits a little bit harder because of what it means overall. But I do think this movie was emotional for like the Guardians as a, as a team. Yeah, and also in Endgame, someone dies. That's, that's, that's another I, I, this movie did make me shed a tear, and that's not something I could say. About. Either No Way Home, a movie I show, or Endgame, I did not cry. I, and this one got, got a little tear out of me. One. <laughs> one little? Single, one little tear. Yeah, the, I, I think I, I really like the story of this movie. I, I, uh, I didn't shed a tear from it. I, I, I did hear like some people were really anxious watching this movie. It's a very... A uh, big anxiety-inducing movie, because the whole time, the, the the way the movie starts is like the, the nowhere, the planet, uh, or or what is it like a giant spaceship, kind of like the Death Star. Like it gets attacked by Celestials. What's the guy's name? Um, hold on, the High Evolutionary. No, oh, you mean Adam Adam Warlock? <laughs> Adam Warlock. Attacked, okay, yeah, Adam Warlock. By Adam Warlock. Yeah, yeah, the guy with the eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, the guy who's uh, who's Goku. He's a meme right now because uh, yeah, of meme. his entrance. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I I have to say, everybody who's asking for a live action Dragon Ball movie, unironically, Adam Warlock is what you're gonna get, and I don't know if you want that as much as you think you do. <laughs> uh, Adam Adam Warlock. He 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 attacks uh, nowhere, and he gravely injures rocket yeah mr mr raccoon so they try to they try to heal him but uh there's like this chip in his brain that prevents him from being meddled with no i i don't that plot point i don't like uh, even though that plot point is what enables the entire movie but there is no way that between him escaping the facility and him joining the guardians he didn't get injured enough to where he needed to use a med pack yeah I, I think that's kind of like the suspend your disbelief because we're telling a hey, we have to set up the heist. <laughs> you know, that's that you know, just turn your brain off and, and just accept that this is the heist setup, you know? And uh, Yeah. Yeah. They need to go to where Rocket was experimented on and uh turn off his brain chip <laughs> so he can live again. Well, wow, explaining it makes it sound really stupid. I mean, it's 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 comic book shit, right? Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not turned off by dumb comic book shit anymore. I'm used to it. Yeah, I mean, oh, we didn't talk about our rating, but uh, I I gave this movie four stars. I I think it's really really good. I gave it three and a half out of stars. I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I think it is better than Guardians two, but weaker than Guardians. Yeah, the, I I think the same thing. Um, but yeah, back back to the back to the movie. Uh, so for pretty much the entire movie, except for the end, uh, because spoiler alert, once again, Rocket doesn't actually die. Uh, he, Rocket's, uh, not in the movie. He's on the ship being, like, on life support for pretty much the whole movie. Yeah, he comes back for, like, the, the, the last act, like, the, the final battle, quote-unquote, but otherwise he's kind of MIA for most of it. We do see him throughout the movie, though, because he... He's the emotional way of the movie, and they're gonna show that through flashbacks. So you're gonna cry. Flashbacks they showed in all the trailers, so you <laughs> saw it coming. Yeah, those flashbacks, uh, they were good. Like they, they, they told the story really well, but I felt like it had the same kind of pacing that Book of Boba Fett does. <laughs> you know, where whenever the story doesn't know what to do, they just flashback to rocket's past <laughs> I, I i do think that um i would have probably been more emotionally attached to i'm gonna call them rocket's family one because i don't remember their names but two that's technically true it's the it's there's an otter a walrus and a rabbit yeah i, I would have been more attached to them if if not for all the trailers kind of just like hinting at the like not even hinting like basically directly saying that uh, these people are dead yeah and we're showing them to you in flashbacks so you can be sad that's not how I relate to characters. I know, like, everyone's, like, already knows that these characters are gonna die. But the movie really plays it up where, like, like every... At the end of every, uh, uh, flat, almost every flashback, the Otter character is like, 
It's great to have friends. And you're like, yeah, yeah, they're all gonna, they're all gonna die. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is great that Rocket's gonna run out of friends. Like, I, like I, I, the first time she said that, I, I don't remember who I was sitting next to. I think I was sitting next to Stefano, but I was, I was like, I was like, yeah, they're, they're all, they're all gonna die. <laughs> Although I, I did get one, one thing out of it that I, I thought was like really good. And it, it's a cliche in these movies, but it's a cliche I really like. But it's, it's when, when Rocket is, is dying, and he, he's like, he has that last vision of, of his otter friend. He's like, oh, look, we're, we're all we're all together again in the afterlife. Oh, yeah. and it's so much fun, and we go and we go on adventures, and we fly across the sky, and it's it's just like we imagined it. And Rocket's like, you know, can I come? And and she says, like, it's not your time yet. Like, like you will, but it's not, you you have to go back to your friends for now. And um, I like moments like that a lot. I don't know what it, what it is. I know it's cliche. I know it's kind of cheesy. But I always liked scenes like that in like anything. You put a scene like that in in a, in a movie or a show or a game, and I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> Um, Spectacular Spider-Man has my favorite version of that scene. Another Spider-Man. That's two. That's two. That's two or three, because we talk about No Way Home. But, uh, yeah, so, that's Rocket for most of the movie. Uh, but the, the movie, the movie's about everybody else, so the, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's talk, let's start with Peter Quill. I think a lot of people have, right, right now, a lot of people have a a bad taste of Chris Pratt in their mouth because of the Mario movie. I think he's pretty good in this movie, but I, I see a lot of criticisms towards Chris Pratt. I, I think he's he's good here, but he, he's he's a different Peter Quill in this movie than he is in, in, the, in the other Guardians movies and in the, the two Avengers appearances he has. But I think it works. I think Chris Pratt does a... I don't want to call him decrepit because that's not entirely like how I would describe him. But he's just like he's broken. He's he's a broken Peter Quill in this movie. And I and I think uh, I think Chris Pratt does a fine enough job at it. I don't think he's bad per se. He's just he's just fine. It's not a it's not a standout performance. I think he's pretty good. I like the 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 scene that they showed in all of the trailers. So uh, yeah, thank you for that, Marvel. Where he's like <laughs> he's like uh, uh, he's like he's like yelling and crying and screaming. He looks pretty good there. Like that's a good a good acting there. But for the rest of the, for most of the movie, he's kind of just Chris Pratt. not acting. Yeah, <laughs> he's just kind of Chris Pratt. Yeah, he is I, I do Chris like Pratt. his his last scene where he ran into his grandfather. Although that's more just it's more on the side of the actor playing his grandfather. But I think that scene is really it's it's one of his better scenes in this movie. Oh yeah, I forgot about that scene. Yeah, he's, he's he goes to see his grandfather. That's the part where I shed a single tear. <laughs> you can't put old men in movies and not have me cry. <laughs> Pat like Pat Pat likes uh Pat likes seeing old men happy in movies. I do. Creed Creed two, that is a good scene. I wish I could see Rocky Balboa be happy again. <laughs> um yeah, so that, that that's that's pretty much Chris Pratt. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about here. He's I I have the least amount to say about him. Yeah, he's he's fine. Um, I don't I don't think he's bad. I don't think he's he's exceptional. But he's he's still. He's still Star Lord, and seeing his journey, kind of like him, like figuring out that he needs to let Gamora go, and again, it's okay. It is is nice. Yeah, I don't really like that. Uh, that he's still like he he knows that this is not his Gamora, but all the time he's always like, you know, me and you, we used to be so in love, bro. I well, don't like the, that. The movie is him kind of coming to terms with the fact that it, like he knows it's not his Gamora. But he still like wants her back and still loves her, right? So like, but but I I think this movie is a nice conclusion to that arc. It's not a plot point I I really enjoyed in Endgame. I don't like that Gamora is just back. Um, and and you could definitely you definitely get that feeling that James Gunn had a completely different plan for this movie. Um, prior to Endgame, Adam Warlock being a being a funny example because you know he's in two after credit scenes and you know he's probably supposed to be the the main antagonist of this movie, but then Endgame happened and uh, yeah. <laughs> and kind of he kind of threw this movie for a loop. Obviously, James Gunn was aware of the things that happened in Endgame before writing this movie, or at least before the final script of this movie was written. But um, it definitely feels like he had a different you know, a different agenda for this one. And because of Endgame, he kind of had to rework things. Um, but considering what he was given, I, I I didn't mind it. I think Gamora here is good, serviceable, I guess. Um, I like what they 
I like what they do with her with the the Ravengers. I think it's I think it's neat. Um, I like her dynamic with Quill. It's you know, it's it's just uh, what if you know what if what if James Gunn got to make the movie he he set out to originally. You know, still not the biggest fan of Gamora. I I did I kind of liked Gamora before, but uh, yeah, this is uh, it, it's it's not um it's not amazing. I will say that. Yeah, my my issue is more like this is Guardians of the Galaxy three. It's it's the the bookend to this trilogy of the story about these characters, and this guardian is not the guardian from the first two movies. Yeah, and they kind of and they kind of have to make do with what they have. And and like I said, for what it's worth, I think um her her shtick with Quill in this movie and him kind of having to come to terms with everything that happened. I mean, and then with her um is good. It's handled well. It's just um I I think it would have been nice if. We got the original version of the story, Sans End Game. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll never, we'll never get that, and that's that's fine. I think the movie is still good, um, regardless of that. One thing I would change in End Game is instead of Gamora dying, it should have been Nebula. I don't agree. <laughs> I like I like Nebula in this movie. Yeah, I'm I'm a certified Nebula hater. I I dis- she's my least favorite MCU character by that's a fair. long shot. That's fair. Uh, I fucking hate her and everything, everything she's in. She's just sucks. I hate Nebula. No, that's fair. But, uh... but in this movie, she got a lot of laughs out of me. Uh, I think, I, I, I know I'm not the only person who hates Nebula, but I feel like she's very different in this movie. The, the Nebula in everything besides this movie is a, a stone cold straight up bitch but in the, in the in this movie she's like you know she she she's a, a part of the guardians now it seems like uh it, you could really feel the time gap between guardians 2 and 3 because she 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 feels like she's part of the family now like she knows these people and uh she knows how to act around them and you know for that negative i gave endgame earlier um a positive is it did bring nebula into the guardians you know that movie is a nice stepping stone between 2 and 3 for for nebula and i think she works here i wish i wish gamora stay dead um just i i i, I think they they could have still told this story and just had nebula I and mean, had gamora be dead and and have like nebula be that like shoulder to lean on while they both kind of figure out what to do with this world without her sister but uh, Gamora's here. I think Nebula's interactions with her are generally pretty, pretty funny too. Yeah, I like I like Nebula's interactions with with Peter. I think that's really funny. <laughs> the the one scene where where they like he's like, I don't know. I just never notice how black your eyes are. You know, you know we talk we talk a lot of, about uh, MCU really shitty MCU jokes. You know, haha, that's funny. Like, hey, get on with the fucking movie. But with Guardians of the Galaxy, the whole a lot of the movie is jokes. That's kind of been established since the first movie. Yeah, and I think it works because, uh, yeah, they're, they're, that's their thing. Being funny is their thing. And and uh, the 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 jokes in this movie are actually really good. Uh, I don't think it's as funny as the first movie. The first movie is still, I think, the funniest MCU movie. But, yeah, I agree. But this is like really close up there. It's 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 really really funny. I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, laughing laughing with the theater yeah we did watch this in theaters by the way yeah yeah we did. you know it's 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 a it's a good fun time despite being such a unhappy story where like the, for the most part the characters are either miserable or like unsure about what they want to do in life um the movie still finds time to to be genuinely like pretty funny and i'm uh, not complaining because that that's kind of what i go to the guardians for yeah and uh speaking of uh of characters that are redeemed from this movie to me uh let's talk about mantis so M- mantis was introduced in guardians 2 and uh, she was very weird uh i don't know what mantis is like in the comics she's in the game but pretty briefly uh so i, I don't know what she's supposed to be like but i don't know if like I, I wasn't like it didn't feel natural having mantis in the second movie and it didn't feel natural having Mantis in in uh, Infinity War either. I think Mantis's role in in, in Guardians Two is, is to be like the odd one out, and in that regard, she plays that role well. She's very awkward. She's very weird with the rest of the cast. But you you don't want them to always be that awkward character who like everyone's kind of weirded out that they're in the room because she the, the Guardians are a family, and you want the family dynamic to shine. 
And thankfully, this movie, um, and I think, does a great job of I didn't watch the holiday special. I, I would imagine some of that is built up in the holiday special. Yeah, and I think it's good here. I think she actually, she found her place in the team. And now she has to find her place in the world. That's, that's, her, that's her arc in this movie. Yeah, uh, in, the, in the holiday special, we find out that uh, she's actually Ego's daughter. One of Ego's many daughters, which means Peter and Mantis are actually siblings. They say it a lot in the movie that uh, that Peter's her Peter's her brother. I guess that plays up with the family thing. Yeah, and I, I guess that's for people like who didn't me watch who it. Didn't watch the, the special. Yeah, because uh, it is kind of important. She she acts less like an alien in this movie and more like more like more like she like it feels like she like picked up on how everybody else speaks and she's like okay, this is how I should speak. But uh, I completely forgot that she has like powers. At all, because she never uses them in this movie except for one scene. Like Mantis has powers. You know who she reminds me of? Actually, it just just came to me. I don't know if you've ever seen Teen Titans, like the old the old show. Yeah, I have. But she's like Starfire. She's kind of like Starfire. Where, where like she's introduced and she's like the odd one out and she's very weird and she doesn't know how to interact with anything, let alone her her newfound family. And then by the end of the show, she's 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 kind of she's adopted to Robin. them. That too, but also she's adopted. She's adopted to the world around her, and also the people that she let into her life. And cute. I like Mantis in this. Movie. Yeah, Ma- Mantis. Mantis is cute in this movie. That yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah, that's her, 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 another redeemed character in my eyes because I didn't like her yeah. before, and now actually she's she fits in really well. Yeah, and I like her arc with Peter, where she's like she wants to help Peter kind of get over Gamora and like and like find the person she met in Guardians 2 again. Um but then also realizing that she can't do that for him. He needs to do it himself. And at the same time, she needs to find herself because like she doesn't have any of the answers either, right? So we all have to find them on our own. And that's kind of it's her arc here. And it's nice. Yeah. It's it's nice. It's nice. We're we're pretty much done with characters that have arcs because of the <laughs> uh, I think I think Drax has an arc. It is. It just. It doesn't start in this movie. It starts in Guardians. One. So yeah, and, and Drax. I I don't know if the, does does the movies do the thing where where Thanos killed his family and everything. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. So that's. I'm. I'm sure that's mentioned in the first movie. So they, that starts in the yeah. first movie. Like. Uh, I think we've talked about this a little bit before. I don't know when we did, but I, I'm sure we have on the podcast. Is that. When Drax was introduced, he was like, you know, Drax. And then second movie comes along and all of a sudden he's this bumbling idiot and he's like the the comic relief and, and it's it feels very weird and very unnatural and they just made him into an, a stupid the stupid big guy. You know, it's it's that it's that uh that typecast stupid big guy. Like he's an idiot in Guardians 1, but he wasn't the the stupid big guy he was just dumb but he had a role and he did like in, in guardians one drax is very like one note like in terms of his goals is he just he wants to kill thanos because they killed his family and that's all he cares about that's all he's focusing on so he's 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 dumb but he's all he also has a one-track mind and i feel like guardians 2 onward just turned him into just a complete like idiot they, they flanderize him to hell um but i think this movie kind of brings him back for me i think you kind of get He's still an idiot. Like, he's still stupid for the sake of being stupid. Like, as a joke. But I think his role is different in this movie, so it feels more earned when he's when he has those, like, nice moments. Whereas the, his moments in, like, Infinity War kind of feel overshadowed by him being a joke. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say Drax was quote-unquote redeemed like, in the same way like uh, Nebula and Mantis were. But he is better in this movie. He has a purpose being here. Uh, he's still pretty funny i still I, I always thought drax was funny i didn't think he was funny in guardians 2 i thought he was but i feel like i feel like it's just also because he's just a joke whereas in this movie he's funny but has something to do so i didn't mind it as much i don't know because i i for me the funniest joke in the entire mcu is from guardians 2 and it's it's a drax where he's like the, the peter's like how long have you been standing there he's like 20 minutes i have Mastered the art of standing so perfectly still that I've become invisible. <laughs> That's fair. I, I love I love that joke. I thought they would have referenced it in this movie because it's such an iconic joke, but they didn't. Sad face. But the the jokes he does have in this movie 
are really, 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 really funny. It reminds me of his jokes from the games. Another connection to the game there. He actually does have a purpose in the story. Like, he, he can talk to the children. Saying that right now sounds really weird. I don't know if we're even going to talk about that. But, uh, yeah, you should just yep. watch the movie. It'll make sense if you it's watch not, it. It's not, it's not top point. So at least get into it a little bit. <laughs> he could speak to the children. Jax's role isn't to be a destroyer anymore, it's to be a father. And that's what yeah. he always wanted, right? So Drax the father. From Guardians of One, he only wanted to be Drax the father. And that was taken away from him. And then Groot is, um, Groot. He, he's in this movie. Yeah, he's in the movie. I want to say he's the worst Guardian, but I don't think that's fair, because he has three three words he could say at any given time. <laughs> he says something at the end. Now he has seven words he can say. Because, you know, at the end of, of the first movie, he says, we are Groot, but at the end of this movie, he says, I love you guys. Aw, so, so sweet. Um, I do like Groot. I think he's fun as, like, a video game character, because that's all he is. He's fun as an action figure. He has a lot more he has a lot more moves he can do in this movie, which is cool. But as far as emotional weight is concerned, he's about as emotional as a tree. <laughs> you know what he should have said at the end? We are family. <laughs> it would have been funny because it's Vin Diesel. I I, I always forget that that's Vin Diesel. <laughs> but like yeah, like you a... always forget that Rocket is Bradley Cooper. <laughs> but no, no, I, I, the thing is, like, Rocket as Bradley Cooper is, like, recognizable because he speaks, right? So you could tell the voice, and you, you, he's, he's playing a character. Vin Diesel says, like, three words uh, for about 90% you. of these, this trilogy. <laughs> and it's hard, it's hard to tell that voice apart, you know? Because Vin Diesel in the Fast movies is also just a tree. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so that's, that's all the guard. Oh, wait, well, there's, there's the, the other guy, uh, Sean Gunn plays, uh, what's his, what's his name? Craglin. I don't like him in this movie because I feel like it's the exact same arc he had in Guardians 2. Yeah, he's just, he's trying, he takes up the mantle after Yondu's death and that's it. That's his whole arc. Yep, I thought he, he came to terms with his position in the Guardians 2 when he picked up the, the arrow. But we're just doing that again. But he's he's not in the movie much. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, speaking of Yondu, Michael Rooker does actually get a, a cameo in this movie as Yondu. Uh, I thought I thought it was reused footage, but it is. It's a straight up like he he came back for this. Yeah, I like I like uh, Yondu. I was happy to see him. Yeah, I love Yondu. He's a probably really good my character. favorite character in these movies. It was nice to see him again. Yeah, but that that's all the that's all the main guardians. Yeah, they're, they're fine. They're fun. I like them. They they are actually really fun in this movie. This this movie feels like like I'm I'm gonna take a, a review from Letterbox that I I saw I saw right here by uh by Ram Heart Emoji, cool name guy. In his review, he says this is a fucking apology letter from Marvel Studios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it kind of feels that way i i totally agree it feels that way uh shaferillas uh, of shaferillas productions on youtube says that this makes thor love and thunder look like a preschooler made it <laughs> yeah, I, I also agree this movie's, this movie's very well shot it's very well composed um it is james gunn so i'm not surprised because he's great it's just it's it's just really good all 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 together. It's it is actually really a really great movie. Uh, I think this solidifies Guardians of the Galaxy as the best MCU trilogy. I would say is the best yeah. MCU trilogy. The only other trilogies are Spider Man, Iron Man, Cap, and Captain America. I and, mean, like I'm gonna count Thor because it's three movies. Ant Man's a trilogy. And, oh yeah, Ant Man is also a trilogy. Like I like. I like Ant-Man 1, that's the only one. Uh, for Captain America, that one's actually a pretty strong contender for, for best trilogy. Iron Man is another strong contender, but Iron Man 2 really lowers it. I guess, well, do you want to count Avengers? Avengers has four movies. Yeah, but I, I count it because you know, Infinity War Endgame is, is one story. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So, I mean, Avengers, um, that's a very strong candidate, but uh, Age of Ultron and Endgame... I would kind of put on the same pedestal. Oh, that's sacrilegious. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't disagree too heavily. <laughs> the pedestal being really low, by the way. <laughs> and, and then uh, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man. You know, come on. Spider Man's great, but uh, Far From Home. Yeah, I, I think if if maybe not the best, I definitely think Guardians is the most consistent trilogy yeah. of the three. 
You know, I saw, I was, oh my god, okay, I was on Instagram yesterday, which I need to stop doing, because <laughs> I saw, a lot of stories start, a lot of my stories start with, I was on Instagram, but, uh, the, I, I saw that, like, IGN made a tier list of all of the, the Spider-Man movies, and, and the people, people in the comments were putting their own tier lists, and I saw a lot of people put Far From Home at the very bottom, under Amazing Spider-Man 2. And every time I see that, I'm just like, you guys just either haven't seen Amazing Spider-Man 2 or or you're giving too much hate to Far From Home. Yeah, I'm, I'm a certified uh, Far From Home hater. I don't, I don't even think it's the worst MCU movie. It's definitely not the worst Spider-Man movie. Like, it's is it one of the worst Spider-Man movies? Sure, maybe. It can be. But like, yeah, it can be. The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and The Amazing Spider-Man 2... Are both no, terrible. I, I no, I don't agree on Amazing One. I, I agree on Amazing Two. I fucking hate that movie, but I don't agree on Amazing One. That's a that's a debate. It's definitely better than Far From Home. It's definitely better than Spider Man Three. Meme enjoyment aside, like I think I think Far From Home is better than Three. I, I'll I'll defend uh, Amazing One. I will I will not defend Two though. Two sucks. Two's the if we're not including Venom and and. Mobi Morbius, uh, then Amazing Two is the worst. But if we are, why would we include Morbius? <laughs> it's in the Sony verse. Yeah, but it's not Spider Man. We're talking about Spider Man. Yeah, but it's in the Sony verse, and 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 the Spider Man characters are in it. <laughs> so I'm counting it. When I say Spider Man movie, I mean movies that have Spider Man in them. <laughs> yeah, but, but but that's what I mean. Is like if we're including the Ven the Sony movies, then. Morbius is the worst, but if we're not, then Amazing Two is. A yeah, I, I wouldn't include the the other Sony movies. I wouldn't even include Venom. Uh, but yeah, like the uh, really great trilogy. But let's let's talk about the actual like let's talk about like the villains here because I we love got, we got three. I I love the High Evolutionary. Yeah, I think he's right. He's one of the stronger um, MC villains. He is way more intimidating than Kang. Kang has the ability. To conquer the universe and destroy the universe, but the High Evolutionary, he did it. No one else did it. <laughs> yeah, if, if he, if the, if the Guardians, if the Guardians let him escape, he would have yeah. done it. Well, he, he like, um, James gonna confirm that he's alive. He's alive. Okay. I hope I, I hope we see him again. Honestly, we, I, like we at the end of the movie, like when they're when they're carrying everybody off the ship and they're getting they're landing on on nowhere. Uh, Dra Drax is holding him. Yeah, I think I saw that. And and uh, James Gunn confirmed it was that was him. So he's he's alive and he'll probably ride in a cell. But who knows? I think a uh, a uh, one thing we we didn't really mention this at all. But one one thing that really separates Guardians of the Galaxy from the rest of the MCU is no one. No one has powers in in the in the in these movies. Nobody here has powers except for Mantis, but Mantis is an alien, and her only real power is that she can sense like. Well, she could make control people. Yeah, she could control people, and she could like sense emotion. But no one else has powers. Everyone else is either really skilled or or really strong. And I, I like that a lot. And and, and the, the the main none of the villains except for the Celestials. Why are the Celestials even in this movie? I, I like I like Adam, but you take him out of the movie and nothing really changes. You see, he's in the movie. They're, the Celestials are in the movie uh, because they were the villains of Guardians Three on the first script, and uh, then Avengers happened. But they already did all that setup for Adam Warlock to be the main antagonist here, so they threw him in. And then uh, his mother, I don't like that character. She's kind of no, I never, and she's kind of cringe. Yeah, she's kind of cringe. What's her name? I don't know, Goldie. I Ayesha. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at the the cast list. I don't know. Maria Bakalova is uh is is Cosmo. <laughs> That's hilarious. Whenever I see her name or face, I, all I think about is Borat too. <laughs> hey, Cosmo's in this movie. Oh yeah, Cosmo's in the movie. I like Cosmo. I Co Cosmo's, Cosmo's, Cosmo's a good dog. Uh, I like Cosmo's backstory. Is the <laughs> is it's actually really funny. But like, cause it's based off a real thing. Like that actually happened during the Soviet Union, Russia. They did actually send animals to space. <laughs> and I guess I guess like Cosmo's just one of those animals. It's a really funny backstory. But yeah, we got to. Uh, the High Evolutionary Adam and who was the who's the third? There isn't a third. No, it's just the High Evolutionary 
Yeah, you said three, and you got me confused. <laughs> well, like, Adam Warlock and, and his mother. The, the Celestials are here because they have this deal with the High Evolutionary, right? They were like... Oh, if we if we don't get take the if we don't take the raccoon and bring them to the high evolutionary, then he's gonna cut us off. I don't know, man. I don't know. The celestials shouldn't have been in this movie. They're weird. I don't know, man. Like I, the whole time I was seeing them, I, was, I I kept thinking they were from Eternals, but they're not. It, it's weird because they you know always like they started off as as would be main antagonists, and then they're they're kind of just reduced to grunts in this movie. Like Adam is is strong, but there's you never get the sense that he's gonna overpower the Guardians aside from like the beginning of the movie. But they they fuck him up like pretty bad, right? And then the rest of the movie, you never get that sense that he's gonna stop them. He's just like a he's just a weird obstacle that's in the way. So again, like maybe maybe he I mean, we not maybe we know he had different plans for for Adam Warlock in the original cut of this movie. We're never going to see it because that movie never made it past the, the script writing phase. But um, I think it'd be interesting if James even ever spoke about it publicly. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing what he has to say. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing Adam Warlock in future movies, but he wouldn't be an antagonist now because he's apparently he's part of the Guardians. That, well, the whatever. Yeah, well, it, it's part of Raccoon's Guardians. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. He, he's redeemed at the end. But like... Uh, for the whole movie, like, you're kind of rooting for him because you're not... He's not really, like, fully evil. His mother is... Yeah, he's, he's literally just a child put in a god's body. And the Celestials are interesting characters. Like, they... they, they I wish they either got their own movie or, or this this movie had the, the plan it was going to have at the beginning. Because the Celestials are interesting characters. They show up in the comics pretty frequently, to, to my knowledge. Yeah, they're they're like a major thing. Maybe one day we'll see. Maybe we'll get a prequel for Adam's character. I don't know. It won't be directed by James Gunn, which kind of sucks. But uh, I would imagine he'll be in in Kang Dynasty or or whatever whatever the plan is next for. Because I think you know they set up the new team. James Gunn is walking, but I don't think we're done with these characters one hundred percent. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Um, whenever those movies come out, we'll see Adam again, and he'll be. A little older, a little, you know, different character, basically. Yeah, at the, at the end of the movie, uh, at, at, you know where it usually says, like, will return. It says Star-Lord will return, not the Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm assuming what that, all that means is that Peter Quill is going to be in Kang Dynasty and, and Secret Wars. Yeah. And probably not the rest of the Guardians. Uh, if, if anybody's going to make a cameo... It's probably going to be Rocket because he has his own team at the end of the movie. His own team. It's him, Groot, Adam, and someone else who, who was one, one, one of the kids from the ship that they save. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, one of the kids. And uh, Sean Gunn. Oh, yeah. And Sean Gunn. What's his... Craglin. Craglin. <laughs> He's also... Sean Gunn is also a um, young Rocket in the flashbacks. He voices young Rocket. Oh, does he? I didn't know. Yeah. I thought that was just uh, Bradley Cooper. Okay. With a voice changer. <laughs> no, I think he could get that high. Oh, yeah? I don't know. I think he has range. I think he has range. Well, I, I, I saw Stars Born. He's a good actor. I, I think he gets a lot of shit because uh, The Hangover was like 15 years ago. But yeah, he's, he's, he's a good actor. Hey, come on, guys. Stop Stop fucking... Stop fucking... It's 2009, man. That was, that was 10 years ago. Come on. Oh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone is in this movie. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, we can't go one episode of this show without talking about Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I have no problem at all. <laughs> I like Sylvester Stallone. I want. I want. I think every movie ever made should be remade with Sylvester Stallone in it. I think he can only make movies better. Okay. What's your favorite movie ever made, Lib? My favorite. It's uh, Everything Ever All at Once. Okay, imagine everything ever all at once. But but Sylvester Stallone was in it, right? Like, come on. Yeah, uh, that's better. Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Now imagine Sylvester Stallone in live action, which is in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that not better? That's better, right? So Suicide Squad. No. Oh, <laughs> There's the whole plot point on the on the ship because you know we we did call this movie a heist movie, or I did. Yeah, it is a it is a heist movie. Uh, it starts off with them needing to to get the the schematics for Rocket's bombs in his fucking chest, and then it becomes uh, you know halfway through 
the mission changes. It becomes save the guardians and the kids who, because uh, like the high evolutionary's whole shtick in this movie. We keep alluding to these kids. Let's talk about them. <laughs> yes, his whole his whole shtick is trying to create the perfect society. Yeah, so he started with animals, and then he made he made a society of furries that we go we visit we visit that planet, and it's just like Earth. It's just Earth, but they're furries. What's it called? Neo Earth. Neo Neo Earth. Yeah, and they have the same problems Earthlings have. So maybe. Maybe the perfect society doesn't exist, but anyway, it's it's built up that actually this was all just a test um, by the high evolutionary, and he was going to blow up that planet because he created a new race of superhumans in these young children, and he was going to flock, take the flock to another planet and, and restart his whole plan until he eventually just replaced the world with his perfect society. That was his plan, and... Um, during that whole thing, the Guardians are separated. So we have Rocket, who's back. He's back on his conscious again. Quill, Gamora, and um, Nebula. They're on the ship, and they have to go break into the High Evolutionary's base again. And they just got out, because they have to go save uh, Drax, Mantis, and Nebula. Nebula wasn't with them. Nebula was with uh, Drax and... Drax and Mantis. Mantis my bad. So we gotta save them, and also they find... You know, these kids shouldn't have to die just for being born, right? So, um, let's go save them, too. And they, they speak this weird alien language that no one understands. It's not anybody's, like, local database. Except one. My main man. Dave Batista, baby. Dave Batista can speak child. So that's the plot, is they go save the- they gotta save everybody. You gotta save the kids, you gotta save the team. And the Rocket gets his final confrontation with the High Evolutionary. To get revenge for- for everything he did to them. Yeah. And it's cool. I, I like the final segment of the movie a lot. It's it's emotional. We have Rocket going back to where he was kept as a baby. And there's more baby raccoons now. He saves them. He saves the kids. We take down we take out the high evolutionary. It's it's great. Yeah, I I I, actually, I, I really like the end. Oh, there's there's this really, really badass scene. There's a there's a hallway fight scene which for some reason are always good. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good. It was good here. It was a really <laughs> good like, hallway fight scene. Very reminiscent of 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 uh, Daredevil. It looked great. Yeah. It was all one take, but there was CG. So does it count? I think it counts. Yeah, it's up to you. I don't think it counts. They, Pat think it counts. Not, they, they they shot the scene. They just pasted it over. Either way, it was cool. Uh, anyways, I uh, I found out the names of of the friends. <laughs> oh okay. Yes, yeah, it, it was it was a. Uh, Teeth's floor and Lila. I can't believe we forgot Lila. Yeah, that's that's a that's a normal human name. Lila is voiced by uh, Linda Cardinelli. Car Cardellini. Uh, she's in Endgame and Age of Ultron. Who is she? Laura Barton. Oh, oh, she's a Hawkeye's wife. Another uh, Pat Sibs for an MCU actress <laughs> list. <laughs> uh, then the uh, Asim Shadri was uh, Teeth's. He was the the walrus, and uh, floor is a. Uh, Michaela Hoover, who was in the first movie. As who? Uh, she was Nova Prime's assistant. Uh, it says Nova Nova Prime's assistant. Side character. Uh, she was also in the Suicide Squad. Uh, in the Suicide Squad, she was Camilla. I don't know who Camilla is. I can't remember characters by name, but uh, yeah. Oh, she's in airplane mode. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's okay, she's in a Marvel movie to balance out. She's She's in two Marvel movies. And a DC movie. And a DC movie, so it's okay. Yeah, it, ba it balances out. It balances out. You you need something really good to balance out uh, airplane mode. <laughs> Let's give a shout out to uh, to Big Al, who is performing a uh, terrible feat of trying to watch the lowest rated movies on Letterbox from worst to best. Yeah, and that's one of them. I also want to say fuck you, Big Al, for telling us to watch music. Yeah, okay. In his defense, <laughs> he didn't tell us to. He didn't tell us <laughs> You see, I told us to. Look, uh, we're so, not going to talk about music. I uh, I take full responsibility for that fiasco. I'm not. I'm not going to. We're not going to talk about music here. But but I, we will say this: If you want to watch the worst movie of all time, watch music. It is, in fact, the worst movie of all time. Oh God, it was terrible. Uh, but shout out to uh, to Big Al. We, I'm. I don't know how good it is for your sanity, but. Um, one day we'll do Barnyard, just for you. Just for you. 
<laughs> no, I've, I've seen one of those. I've seen some of those movies on that list, and it's not. It's not. <laughs> Me too. Movie. I've seen like a good amount. I've seen too movie. many that too many of them that I'm comfortable with. You know, They're... like I I watch a lot of too much shit. For people, for people who are watching, listening to this that don't know, uh, Letterbox has a list of their top two fifty best narrative features. Someone made an opposite list: the top two fifty worst rated narrative features. <laughs> And that's the list we're talking about. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll pull a backlog re- request off that list. Who knows? Oh, God. We'll oh, no. <laughs> we'll scrape the bottom of that barrel eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, one day. So uh, I guess that's pretty much it for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I think it's a f- very, very uh, fun time. Yeah, I, I, I think it's really, really, really good. If you haven't seen it, please do. Um, it's probably the best MCU movie in, in a long time. Yeah, it's the best, it's the best Phase 5 movie, that's for sure. But Phase 5 just started, so uh, that doesn't really mean anything right now. Let's hope, uh, let's hope they hit the ground running and they continue to, to keep up the pace. You know? In my ranking of all the MCU movies, I have it at 10. I don't remember where it is on my list that I'm not going to check, but I think it's like 11 or 10. Yeah, I, I have it at 10. It's a, it's above, uh, for me, it's above Civil War, um, Thor Ragnarok for me. Like this, it's above those kinds of movies. I, I, uh, I think I, I might have, I, I think it's tied with Ragnarok and it's below Civil War, but I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, if you want to check out our list of uh, MCU ranked, you can find them on our Letterboxd accounts, uh, which you can find on the link tree. More about that at the very end if you want to figure out how to get there. <laughs> yeah, plug. Yeah, <laughs> plug. Watch the rest of the episode. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we're going to move on to Backlog, the segment where we recommend each other movies to talk about in the next episode. Uh, last episode, Pat recommended me Juno. Uh, so let, let's talk about Juno. Yeah, we watched it together. We did actually. Uh, funny, funny thing. Uh, we um, we had a bunch of movies that we wanted to watch, so we put it in a spin the wheel thing, and we spun a wheel, and it landed on Juno. And we were like, you know, we probably should have just watched Juno to begin with because we needed yeah. to record this. <laughs> yeah, you're running late on this recording. We probably should have just watched it. But, you know, we did. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, we watched it, and I gotta say, uh, it's really, really good. I think the reason why Pat recommended me this was because when when he recommended me Super Bad, I mentioned that I don't really know if Michael Sarah is a good actor or not. Yeah, I mean, I I noticed he hadn't watched uh, Juno. Yeah, so uh, I will say I have I have um I have my answer, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Sarah. Is an okay actor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't have an answer. You're still not sure. It's yeah, just, I'm still okay. not sure. I'm still not sure. <laughs> uh, I I thought he'd be in this movie more. He's on the fucking poster, but he's barely in the movie. But I like that because the movie's about Juno, and uh, she's she's great. Played by Elliot Page, formerly Emma Page. Very very great acting right here. Very good movie. I have it at four and a half. Four and a half. I have it at four. Four, not four and a half. Hey, I think I also have it at four. I think I'm gonna say it's a four because I think I, I like Juno. I saw it a long time ago. I haven't seen it in a long time though. Um, so it was nice to revisit for me. Uh, we watched it uh, together, like we said, and it was nice to to give it a revisit with someone who had never seen it before. By the way, I said Emma Page. I was wrong. It's a, uh, it's a. Uh... It's Elliot, Elliot Page. No, no, no. The, the the her former his former name, uh, Ellen. It was Ellen. Because when when uh when, yeah when he was when he was uh in this movie it was before he came out as trans. Uh, they she he, she's casted as Ellen Page. Okay. But yeah, uh, really, really great movie. Uh, really touching story. It's really cute. But I will say, the music choices. I hated yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's it's meant to just show Juno's different or different from everybody around her, and it's supposed to like reinforce her. I'm gonna call it a relationship, but it's not necessarily a relationship with the potential adopted father of of her baby. Um, oh yeah, she, she's she's weird, but she has someone she can relate to. Um, but yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like these song choices. I, I, I no, it wasn't for me. I like the song at the end, the the one that uh, that Juno and and uh, Polly sing together. But uh, all, all the other music choices were like really weird, except for uh, uh, like the rock songs that they picked, like the ones for for the what's his name, Mark, like the ones that because Mark's in a band, uh, and Mark's also creepy. 
I mean, I'm, I'm happy they didn't go for the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, I'm really happy they didn't go for the low-hanging fruit. Uh, also, Dwight is in this movie. Dwight from The Office. And uh, it's just straight up Dwight. His name's Rollo, but his name is Dwight. Dwight K. Dwight K. Schrute. Uh, J.K. Simmons is um, is the father in this movie and wow like i it's it's he he, he has some really good lines i like jk simmons so much. it's always it's always nice to see him i love jk simmons he's one he's one of my favorite actors for sure <laughs> what <laughs> no, it's just like me too <laughs> me, me too man i it also like jk simmons it makes me happy it makes me happy yeah this movie made me happy it was it was a it was it's um it's definitely like a uh a movie I'm probably going to come back to uh, in a couple of years because I'm like, oh, yeah, Juno, you know, it's uh, it's surprisingly feel good for what it is. Yeah, surprisingly feel good for for uh, a movie about a teenage pregnancy. Ooh, that's a statement. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the director of this movie, uh, Jason Reitman, ended up going on to direct Ghostbusters Afterlife. I think that's I think Juno is better than that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think Juno is better than that. But I I I did like the directing in this movie. The cinematography was uh, different, and uh, I appreciated that. Yeah, overall, the Juno was a solid experience. Yeah, four four out of five for me. Four out of five for me too. Yeah, uh, it was a really nice story. Really nice. Two thousand seven. The movie was very two thousands. If you like the two thousands, watch this movie. Uh, she has fucking. She has a burger burger phone, man. I had a burger phone growing up. I also had a SpongeBob phone. I hate this information. What? <laughs> what kind of phone did you have? A normal phone. Yeah, a normal phone. I didn't have a. I didn't have a phone in my room. I had a phone in my room. I got a. I got a cell phone when I turned like sixteen or fifteen or however old. However old I was when I started high school. I had a phone in my room. Uh, first was the burger. No, first was the SpongeBob phone, and then I got the same burger phone that she has in the movie. My mom used to hate it because. I would call my friends all the time, and then and then she wouldn't be able to call her friends. <laughs> That's probably why I didn't have one. Oh, I miss landlines. I still have a landline. It's just it's it's, it's, it's in my house. <laughs> like I don't I don't. Uh... We have a landline, but we only have one landline, so we don't have that problem anymore. Uh, but yeah, so that that's uh that's gonna be it for Juno. But I have to recommend Pat a movie. You do. Uh, also, first of all, I'm not sure if you watched it and just forgot to log it because it's all the way at the end of your watch list. Oh, I mean, I might, I might have. I don't. It doesn't. It, it Letterbox says you haven't. So if you have, fuck you. Uh, but I'm going to recommend you a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh no, I haven't seen. Yeah, it. okay. So it's a movie about Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I wanted to see it uh, when it was in theaters, and I didn't. Yeah, well, I did, and it was really, really good. <laughs> uh, well, at least I thought it was really good. Um, I love this movie. It's a really feel-good movie for me. Uh, and I did mention before we recorded that it made me cry, but it's not because uh, the movie's sad or anything. Well, the movie is pretty sad, uh, but it's uh, it's because of the nostalgia. I used to watch Mr. Rogers growing up. Uh, it's a great movie. Tom Hanks, my favorite actor. Like just uh, straight up, Tom Hanks is my favorite actor, and he's a really good movie. Really, really good in this movie. I'll uh, I'll look forward to watching it. Uh, well, and while you look forward to watching that, uh, you guys need to look forward to watching the next episode of Fresh Off the Reel coming out next week, which will be our fiftieth episode. Yep, and it's a it's a big movie for number fifty. It's an important one. Uh, next time we are going to be talking about Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. The a uh, much anticipated sequel to my favorite movie ever made. Did I love it? Did I hate it? Did Lib Love or hate it? Was it good? Yes, but find out more next time. <laughs> Across the Survivors, currently, right now, at the time of recording, this might be different later, is number one on Letterboxd's top 250 narrative features. I mean, recency bias, right? Yeah, that's recency bias. I don't think it's better than Godfather, but. You know. I don't think it's better than the first Spider-Verse movie. I'm saying, I've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next episode where we're going to be talking about Cross the Spider-Verse. But uh, for now, that's going to be it for us. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. Uh, very sorry for the, uh, for the long delay between episodes. But hey, Zelda's a really good game. 
and you should play it. <laughs> Just got to say it yep. one last time before we end. Uh, but if you liked this episode and you want to hear more, then make sure to follow us on whatever platform you're using right now to listen to our voices. You can find all of our shit on uh, on Linktree. That's linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel. No spaces, no caps. See, I finally plugged it. I talked about it before. And now I plugged it. Uh, there you will find uh, links to our socials, our Twitter, and our Instagram. And you will also find our Letterboxd accounts and a form that you could fill out to recommend us a movie or TV show. And we'll watch your recommendation and we'll make an episode about it. If you're listening on Spotify, just scroll down and uh, let us know what you thought about the episode in the Q&A section. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can also just let us know what you thought in the comments. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's going to be it for us. So we will see all of you in a theater near you. Bye-bye. Take care. We're doing the sound test. Whoa, this is the test of sound. I have a pop filter this time. This is the podcast first. I have a pop filter. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That that's a thing I have now, and I'm gonna. It's gonna sound marginally better or worse. Who knows? Go, say words with P is in them. Penis. Oh. Pickled peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Is the, are those are those p words good enough for you? Here, may, maybe I'm... I'll I'll take off the pop filter from mine. Let's see what it sounds like. Penis. P P nine. All right, I'm putting it back on. <laughs> I'm uh I'm 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 I just got off work like five minutes ago, and now we're recording. And then after that, oh, Flash got a seven out of ten for my GN. Whoa. Who would have thought? Maybe it won't be mid after all. Maybe it'll be fine, which is better than bad. Remember when movies got like seven out of ten, or even games, even even games. Um, remember when people when games got like seven out of ten and that was good, and now everyone's like, if it's lower lower than a nine, it's a fucking piece of garbage. <laughs> when that happened? Why? <laughs> Why? Because of Endgame. No, I feel like that that's been a thing before Endgame. I don't know. I don't think it's an Endgame thing. I think people's standards are stupid. <laughs> like guys 7 out of 10 is above average 6 out of 10 is above average average is 5 yeah. out of 10 that's that's the and whole like, point of it and like a 5 is still like a, a good movie I'm not, okay, not great but like it's enjoyable I, I don't know I don't know why you things have to be like if it's not a 9 or a 10 it's bad 5 out of 10 is right in the middle yeah those are fine I can yeah. enjoy a 5 out of 10 what what happened why, why do things need to be a fucking 10 now or a 9 or else almost, and then it's bad I don't know all that to say is, uh, is uh, I might bump my Spider-Verse review up a little bit. We'll see. I think, I think for, for video games, it's because they're more expensive now, and people need to justify spending that much money on a game. That that's fair, but also you can, you can get a lot of enjoyment out of like a seven out of ten game. Yeah, because I, I think the problem is if you expect every game to be a ten out of ten or a nine out of ten, then you're you're gonna just be disappointed all the time because. That's like the cream of the crop, right? Like, like not everything's going to be a 9 out of 10. Yeah, the, be the best things ever, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. And, like, even 10 out of 10 is kind of, I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't just give that out. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, some of my favorite games ever made, I don't even give a 10 out of 10, because that, that's, that's perfect, and nothing's perfect. But what I do give a 10 out of 10 is The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. Ooh. <laughs> No, I like Tears of the Kingdom. It's a really? solid, like, it's like a solid day at a time. Yeah, you guys are wondering why we haven't it's been, been here in a while. Even I've been playing Zelda, and I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like, I think Breath of the Wild stinky. <laughs> Nintendo, what the fuck, man? You even got me. Yeah, that's a test of sound, I guess. Yeah, alright, that's good. The rocket stuff is from the game. The stuff that happens on Nowhere is from the game. Uh, them going to, like, well, I got a... Shut up! Beep, <laughs> beep, <laughs> 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 Okay. <clears throat>